Hey, what's going on? It's Jerry Glean back on the scene here with another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing y'all how to make your vocals warm using saturation. So let's hop right in and get to it. All right, so first let's really quickly discuss what saturation is. So in analog devices like preamps, tape machines, actual physical pieces of hardware, when you drive the audio signal into these devices, at a certain point, you're gonna start to get what's known as saturation. And the saturation can be pleasing to the ears when you use it in a subtle way. Because what's really happening is there are harmonics that are being added into your audio signal. And this is what makes your audio signal just sound more full. Think about what happens when you boost the saturation on a photo. The colors in the picture become more boosted and everything just seems more warm. This is the effect that you're aiming for when you're adding saturation to vocals. So there are different plugins that you can use to emulate these analog devices where saturation is being created. So some plugins are a little more easier to use than others. Here I have one of my favorite plugins pulled up. It's called the Decapitator made by Sound Toys. So over here on the left side of the plugin, you have the drive knob and the drive knob is going to control how much saturation you want to add to the vocal. So all the way to the left is no saturation and then all the way to the right is heavy saturation. And then over here on the right side of the plugin, you have the mix knob and the mix knob is useful because when you really crank the drive and get a lot of saturation on the vocal, the mix knob will allow you to blend in some of the original vocal with the actual saturation effects. So that way you retain some of the initial vocal transients that are gonna get removed if you add heavy saturation to the vocal. So all the way to the left on this mix knob is going to be um, no effect added to the vocal, so no saturation. And then as you move this all the way to the right, you add more and more of the effect to the vocal. Then up here above the mix knob, you have the output knob. And this is going to control the gain or the volume of the vocal signal leaving the plugin. So when you increase this drive knob over here and add more saturation to the vocal, you're increasing the overall loudness of your signal. So once we get that saturation from driving the signal, we wanna then turn the signal back down to its original loudness. And instead of manually adjusting this output knob to try to turn down and match the volume of the vocal signal coming into the plugin, what I like to do is leave this auto switch right here turned on and it does a pretty good job of adjusting the gain on its own to match the volume of the vocal signal coming into the plugin. And then here in the middle of the plugin, you have the tone knob. So um, this is either gonna make the color of the saturation that you add to the vocal more bright or more dark. So this is completely up to you and we'll experiment with this when we go ahead and play the vocal. All the way to the left is gonna be dark and then all the way to the right is gonna be more bright. And then to the left and right of the tone knob, you have an EQ section. So if you wanted to remove some of the lower frequencies, you could use the low cut knob right here. And if you wanted to remove the higher frequencies from the vocal, you could use the high cut knob over here. And I, like many of you, probably have an EQ plugin already loaded in my vocal chain, so I don't really ever mess with the high cut and the low cut knobs, um, but they're there if you need them. And then down here at the bottom of the plugin, you have five different styles of saturation that you can add to the signal. And each of these styles is gonna be a emulation of a different piece of analog gear. So this is really a creative choice that you're gonna have to make on your own. And I'll actually cycle through each of these when I play the vocal so that way you can hear each of the style sounds that it's adding to the signal. And then lastly, up top here on the plugin, you have the punish button. And if you turn this on, it's just gonna add really heavy amounts of distortion um, to your signal coming into the plugin. So I usually turn this off when I'm mixing vocals. All right, so now that you understand each control on this plugin and you kind of have a handle on what saturation is, let's go ahead and play the vocal by itself and add some saturation to it. I have everything else muted so that way you can kind of hear um, how each knob affects the actual signal of the vocal. Losing sleep, that don't bother me now. Stay right here, can you promise me that? When the stars fade into the morning light, you be by my side. If this car breaks down without a doubt, you still down for the ride. Is this reality or are we stuck inside of a dream? This world been spinning faster ever since you stepped to the scene. The way I see it got me thinking as I take it all in. I put my pride to the side, let it go with the wind. That don't bother me now. Nah. Stay right here, can you promise me that? When the stars fade into the morning light, you be by my side. If this car breaks down without a doubt, you still down for the ride. 
Is this reality or are we stuck inside of a dream? This world been spinning faster ever since you stepped to the scene. The way I see it got me thinking as I take it all in. I put my pride to the side, let it go with the wind. All right, so I think that the vocal is sounding pretty cool right there. I got the drive knob um, a little past um, 12 o'clock right there, and then I adjusted the mix knob. I turned it down a little bit just to retain some of the original vocal, and the output knob is actually set to auto, so it's automatically adjusting the volume of the vocal. And then down here on the tone knob, I left the uh, the knob a little bit you know, more towards the brighter side. I just like the way it sounded there. Um, but that's a stylistic choice for you to make. And then lastly, I just cycled through each of the styles of this plugin and I ended up choosing the middle style, um, style in. And again, these are all just emulating a separate piece of analog gear. So pick whichever sound you like best. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the vocal again and I'm gonna turn the saturation plugin on and off so that way you can really hear the effect of saturation on the vocal. Losing sleep, that don't bother me now. Stay right here, can you promise me that? When the stars fade into the morning light, you be by my side. If this car breaks down without a doubt, you still down for the ride. Is this reality or are we... All right, so if you're listening on headphones or studio monitors, you probably heard when the saturation was turned on and engaged, the vocal just became um, more alive and it had more character to it. And it was actually really subtle, but it really just brought the vocal out more. Let's go ahead and unmute everything and play the vocal again so you can really hear the saturation with regards to the whole mix. Losing sleep, that don't bother me now. Stay right here, can you promise me that? When the stars fade into the morning light, you be by my side. If this car breaks down without a doubt, you still down for the ride. So something to mention and talk about here is where we actually place this plugin in our vocal chain. So there really is no right answer. I see people using saturation at the beginning and also at the end of their vocal chain. So for me, I like to use it at the beginning of my vocal chain before any EQ or compression is added, but really just do what works best for you. And let me show y'all another plugin that I love to use for the same saturation effect. I went ahead and removed the decapitator plugin that I was using and now I've loaded the NLS channel here, which is made by Waves. This is a super cool plugin. It basically emulates three different styles of analog mixing boards, which all have their own unique sound. So you have the spike, which is emulating an SSL board. You have the mic, which is emulating an EMI board. And then you have the Nevo, which is emulating the Neve board. So you can try each of these out and pick whichever sound you like the best. I'll switch between each of them when I play the vocal. And really the only knob that you want to adjust here is the drive knob. So it's very easy to use. This is how you're gonna control how much saturation you wanna add to the vocal. So the higher that you crank this knob, the more harmonic distortion and saturation that you're going to create. So let's go ahead and press play and add some saturation to the vocal. Okay, so right there, I thought it added a subtle amount of character to the vocal that I liked. And remember, you don't have to overdo this effect. Really, you're just aiming to help bring the vocal out and sit up front in the mix. So saturation is really such a cool effect to experiment with. It really just adds you know, what you're missing with the sound of the vocal and it makes everything sound more full and complete. All right, so that's it for today. I hope y'all learned something. If you're still confused about anything, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and I'll see you on the next video.